to explore. I'm Mary Ruth Snyder, Executive Director for the Campbell River and District Chamber of Commerce. And we have two very special guests joining us today, Maureen Hunter and Rachel Weaver from River City Inclusion, formerly the Campbell River Association of District Community Living, right? Did I get that right? Not close. quite, but Not that's close. part of the reason we changed it. <laughs> <laughs> Campbell River and District Association for Community Living. I had it backwards, right. okay. Yeah, okay. Not a problem, same number of, <laughs> of words. <laughs> well, I am very happy to have both of you here today. So uh, actually, I want to just start a little bit on, on the personal side, if I could first. So okay. Maureen, how many years have you, it used to be known as Cradacal was mm -hmm. the short form. So how many years did you work at, at, have you worked for this organization? I'm in my 40th year. With 40? The 40th year. I was really young when I started. I was just going to say, what were you, 10 when yeah. they hired you? I was in my early 20s. Wow, 40. Yeah. You don't hear of that anymore. At, at, at uh, River City Inclusion, there's quite a few people. I'm, I'm the longest uh, employee now, okay. uh, but uh, we have a lot of people who are in their 25th and 30th year. Quite a, wow. quite a bit, actually. That's extraordinary. That reminds me of Sandra Parrish, of the executive director at the museum. Same thing. Yeah. She's been there 40 plus years as well. That is extraordinary. It's an incredible compliment to the society that uh, we have such long running employees. It, it really shows their dedication and passion to what really, we do. Really, truly. Yeah. And it speaks highly of the organization I work for or have the privilege to work for. When you like what you do and you like who you work with, yeah. you don't need to change. Well, I guess, yeah, that's amazing. Now, when you first started, what, what was the role that you were in? Um, I, I, I started as a life skills instructor okay. and I did that for two years and then a position came up in what was referred to then as a sheltered workshop and I did two years there and while I was in the sheltered workshop employment services became a thing so uh, employment in the community okay. and I applied for that position and so I've been there for 36 years. Wow. Yeah. Now, I guess we can come back to, well, no, I'm going to ask you this now. In the 36 years that you've been in that role of employment supports, how have you seen the general population change with regards to employment of the individuals you work with? Um, what's really becoming uh, really noticeable is the, the employers who were in school programs and high school programs who had people in their classroom who had labels of developmental disabilities. Okay. So I'm getting more and more, so probably 30 years ago, 25 years ago, the schools really started to promote having students in their classroom, in their homeroom, so there was more inclusion and mm -hmm. integration in the schools. So the exposure as there. So now when I approach employers, quite often they say, oh, I went to high school with him, or oh, he was in my home economics class, or I oh, went to okay. gym with him. So that's, that's really, really, really noticeable. So the work that was done 35 years ago is really paying off now. Oh, okay. That's fascinating to see yeah. that come full circle. And I suppose if it wasn't the same person in your job for 36 years, that noticing of that particular aspect might not have occurred. Um, maybe. <laughs> Wait, you know, and, and our community is so, so unique. Campbell River is so unique. Yeah. You know, I have um, the pleasure of supporting people who, um, one gentleman knew is at uh, Quality Foods. He was there when it was IGA when it first opened up. Oh my so goodness. he's been there 20 plus years. Another gentleman wow. has been at MVP when it was Fog and Suds. Yeah. And, and he's been there almost 20 years. So mm. we have a lot of long time employers right. in our community. Now, okay, so what is your actual title? My actual title is Employment Services Supervisor. Okay. So I oversee um, different aspects of the employment services that River City Inclusion offer. Okay, awesome. Now, Rachel, we're gonna turn to you. Now, Rachel, you've been in your new role as Executive Director for yeah. 
almost uh, just two about years? two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yes. Oh, time it's flies. flying by. <laughs> because I think we first spoke when you were about a month or two in. It, it was, was very early. early on in my tenure. <laughs> yes, I'm pleased to be back a couple of years later. Thanks for having us. Now, what was behind the name change and how did that come about? So the name change came up actually as early on as my, my job interview with the Board of Directors. It was okay. something that actually had been explored prior to my starting. Uh, our name has changed, uh, this will be our fourth name change, I believe, mm -hmm. since uh, the Society launched almost 62 years ago. So wow. there have been many changes. Um, and the Board felt that the name was quite long. People didn't really know how to say it correctly. And so they, they used CRIDACL, which was the, um, the acronym for Campbell River and District Association for Community Living. And CRIDACL is a very harsh word. It, uh, I remember somebody on our strategic team, uh, strategic planning team, when we were talking about it, said it sounded like a, a like a medical problem. Like, oh, you have hundred percent, and yeah. and it just it, it just doesn't it doesn't resonate with who we are. It d it didn't really resonate with the community, and there was a lot of um, just unclarity around what what and who we were. Okay. So we we undertook what I thought was a really awesome process uh, ar around the name change and it was really well supported by uh, by our society and the community of Campbell River. We actually put it out to the staff and clients and we surveyed them and said give us your ideas for a new name including keeping the name that we had. We're very respectful of our history yeah. uh, so it was always an option on the table to keep it and we got over 90 different suggestions uh, that came back to our uh, our strategic plan committee that was responsible for branding and, and the, the new name process. And when we got all those names back, we had criteria and we whittled it down. I think it got down to 20 that fulfilled the criteria. There were names that other societies already had that we couldn't you know, appropriate. So, right. so, and the registry society has very clear direction on what you can use and not right. use. So we ended up with 20 and then we put those out in a survey back to our staff and our clients and the board and families and stakeholders with the society. They all voted and then we took the top three results from that survey and worked closely with the Mirror newspaper who were so supportive of this yeah, process. They, cool. The Mirror's been wonderful to us and we actually put it in the paper and we allowed the whole community of Campbell River to vote on it. Awesome. And River City Inclusion was the winning name and we, are, we could not be more thrilled with it. <laughs> and it's a soft name too, yes. River City Inclusion. Yeah. It just yeah. kind of rolls off the tongue like velvet. That's right. I, we're, okay. I think everyone is, is really pleased with it and inclusion is really at the heart of everything that yeah. we do. So our name right truly represents our mandate in terms of what we do to support our clients. Okay. But also, if you look at the landscape of Campbell River, there are many nonprofits as well as for-profit businesses with the name River City right. in some capacity. So we are a part of this community, not just through inclusion, which is our mandate, but through our name that, that, that ties us to Campbell River, the River City. Right, okay. Well, that's awesome. And congratulations on such a successful mm -hmm. little campaign in choosing the name. And Thanks. again, being so inclusive, even in that process. Yeah. Very and important to us. Allowing everybody to kind of have their say. Thank Very you. Cool. So after you came up with the name, of course, then comes all of the new graphics and all the new logoing mm -hmm. and all yes. the new, as evidenced here by on our mugs here, I'm gonna see if we can show this. So, oh, there's a cool thing, okay. So this is the new mug that River City has going on. And it's very, who designed your um, new logo? So we have a, we worked with a wonderful artist on the, she's on the mainland, but she grew up in Campbell River. So again, okay. the tie to Campbell River, working with our community. Her name is Tracy Hayes, and she's actually, um, she's an artist, she, she does logo design, but she also illustrates children's books. Yes. She works with a lot of nonprofits. She works with a lot of schools doing mural uh, design. And nice. she actually designed a mural for us in our Dogwood Place Child and Youth Development Center which was, is a beautiful, beautiful mural as you walk in the lobby and it represents Campbell River. And it shows uh, not just Campbell River, but the ocean, the lighthouse over on Quadra, the BC Ferry that goes back and forth. Uh, she really took the landscape of Campbell River and, and displayed it beautifully on a wall. And so when we had this 
really fantastic working relationship with her. I called her up to see if she would be interested in working with us, and she basically did it as a volunteer effort. It was incredibly kind of her. She did a beautiful job, mm -hmm. and I like that it's, um, I like that it represents our, again, our community with water and trees and, and our name, of course, uh, and the colors. I, I think we're all really just thrilled with it. Awesome. Now, let's talk about sort of w what is the, if you had to pick three main focuses that are underway right now, what are they? Three main focuses of our organization? Yep. Uh, staffing. <laughs> so if anyone is interested in a job, we offer wonderful, wonderful jobs with great benefits. Uh, so staffing in terms of, of moving forward and, and really supporting our people. Okay. Uh, that is a, that's a huge mandate for us. Uh, employment, massive part of and, and a very important part of what we do mm -hmm. to enhance the lives of our clients. And I, I think really just constantly striving and looking at ourselves over and over again in the various programs that we have to make sure that we are doing everything we can uh, to correctly uh, uh, enhance and support our clients' lives in the current landscape while preparing for what is our future in this community and our future okay. and this community are changing rapidly. Yeah. We're experiencing enormous amounts of growth and, uh, and, and growth means that we are growing too, our client base is growing and making sure that we are looking to the future in terms of our infrastructure, in terms of our staffing, in terms of our, um, the supports that we have in place. I, I think that those are the three most yeah, important think, things yeah. I'm dealing with right now from a, a higher level. Maureen, your feet on the ground. <laughs> Um, staffing is one. Um, we're really fortunate in the employment services. Mm -hmm. um, we have a good core group of people that work really hard and are very dedicated. Um, but staffing as a whole with the association, I mean, there's a lot of us have been there for 20 plus years, so it must be a great organization to work with. The other is continuing to strive to provide better services for the people we're fortunate enough to work with and okay. support. Um, things change, society changes. Helping people become as independent as possible yep. is a is a big is a driving force for us. We're we're constantly looking at new ways of of teaching or learning new things, bringing new employers on board. So individuals coming up through the school system, it's so important that when people leave school that that they don't have the two or three years, gap years they call it, but once you get used to not being a productive member of society, getting someone back into the community can be very difficult. Okay. Um, so that's that's really important for us is, is, the, is the 19 and 20 years old, so when they're transitioning from school into employment that, that the support's available to help them do it successfully. Yeah, it's and that's a it's an important point because it's not just um, employment is not just important to River City inclusion and it, the clients it supports in that capacity, but employment as a as a mandate for all community inclusion agencies across the province, all the way up to the funding level. They are recognizing how incredibly important employment is in improving the quality of somebody's life, and it's not just the work; it's actually the money that. Th that people earn th that, right. that helps ins enhance their lives. They, they, they can afford to live more independently. They can purchase things that they would like. They can participate more as a member of a community when they can afford to participate yeah. as a member of a community. Right. And, and so employment is really becoming extremely important and it's a testament to our society that we've had an employment program for as long as we have. We, we've had employment as a m main part of our society for many, many years longer than a lot of other agencies across British Columbia, so yeah. it's a point of great pride. We have over uh, 50 local companies that hire the clients that we support, which is an incredible number given the size of Campbell River. Okay. And then we have our own uh, social um, uh, social enterprise. We actually have three of them that fall under uh, Skyline uh, Productions. We have three different companies that we employ our own people, and it's it's their companies. And 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 what are those companies? Just so to remind everybody. Of course. So it is. <laughs> so Skyline Productions is kind of the head company, and under which falls uh, we have a lawn mowing company, we have a boom board company, and confidential shredding company. 
Now, what's the, what was the second one? They're uh, called boom boards, and I will pass this over to Maureen. I had to get a lesson in what a boom board was. I thought it was something to do with skateboarding when yeah. I first started. Okay. It is not. Well, so back in the early 80s and early 90s, yeah. when we had Skyline Productions, everybody knew of our lawn furniture. We used to manufacture lawn furniture, cedar lawn furniture. Okay. And many, many people in Campbell River still have those products, which is a test to the quality. Um, we had a couple of contracts within that company, and one was manufacturing log boom mar markers for the logging companies. Oh. So they're license plates for log booms is what they are. So gotcha. it identifies the company and the area it comes from okay. and the log sort that it comes from. Okay. So last year I think we did 24,000 boom boards which equates to 12,000 booms Isn't or, or uh, barges that left That's Vancouver cr Island. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So what do you mean they left Van? So like they're going out there in the ocean, in the wide open ocean. The the lo the logs the they are marked. So so each board, and each each company has its own color, and then within that company they mark what sort they come from. So it could be Menzies Bay, it might be uh, Gold River, it might be okay. Lady Smith, wherever. So they're they're tagged, and then they're numerical zero zero one. So we start. So SHO-23, which would be this year, and then it goes yeah. zero, zero, 001. And then we go so zero, where zero, do the, 002. So where are these log booms going? Um, I, I'm guessing to the lower mainland and beyond. Okay. Um, so they would Like not across the ocean. No. I, they, I, well, they would go from the island to the mainland. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I don't okay. think the log booms leave the Fraser Valley. They usually okay. are transported by barge okay. or um, by train after that. All right. Wow. Sorry, 12,000? Mm -hmm. So each, each boom has two boards. Okay. So we made 24,000. 24, yeah. For each. Oh, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah, we have okay. an amazing client list who, uh, who you know, yeah. who, who, <laughs> who hire us to do that. Our confidential shredding business is yeah. also quite widespread with clients. And it's really, it, uh, it has over. really taken off the, the yeah. shredding. So yeah. um, we, what do you do with the paper? It has to go to recycling. We can't give it to people because it has confidential information. So although they'd have to sit there and piece everything back together, just to maintain professionalism yeah. and the people know, so um, it's shredded, it's bagged in the shredding, and then it's sent to the recycling center. Yeah. Okay. And the beauty of the way that Maureen has set up these uh, social enterprises is that it, it, it really serves as an employment opportunity for people with diverse abilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, somebody might have um, you know, a greater skill set in one area than somebody else. And so mm -hmm. there's varying degrees of opportunity within each of those businesses right. for people to participate. And, and Maureen and her staff do a beautiful job awesome. of supporting all of our clients in various aspects of those companies, as well as supporting the individuals that work for companies locally. Okay. So of your top three priorities, the first one you mentioned was employment. So how many jobs do you have available right now at River City Inclusion? Oh goodness, um, that's a great question. I, Just ballpark. It, ballpark, I would say 30. What? Mm -hmm. Probably 12 full-time. Positions. It's a varying, varying positions. We, we, River City Inclusion is actually quite large and we how have many, a lot how of... How many staff do you actually have? Uh, on any given day, we're, we're about 215 at last count. Really? Yeah. We have, uh, we're, we're quite okay. broad. We have a number of different services that we provide. Okay. And uh, we, we start uh, at birth and quite frankly support people all the way through end of life through okay. a variety of different mm -hmm. programs. Right. And it's not just programs that support people with developmental disabilities. We also uh, property manage certain properties where uh, we, we own an assisted living facility okay. where we support seniors. Yeah. So we have a large number of staff supporting seniors at that facility. We, uh, we run a couple of other housing, um, inclusive housing properties. So we have people who have to work at those properties to maintain them correctly. Okay and to provide assistance in certain areas. Um, we have uh, Dogwood Place Child and Youth Development Center that uh, has, um, goodness, we serve over 600 children and their families through that center alone. Are you looking for any um, individuals that have early childhood education? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so at Dogwood Place, the staff that work there are considered paraprofessionals. So they're uh, mm -hmm. occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech therapy, and then there are assistants within those programs. So the specific uh, titles of what we're looking for, there might be like an occupational therapy assistant, or okay. um, so they're, yeah, they're varying jobs that fall under paraprofessional classifications. Okay. Uh, so all of our all of our open positions are on our website at River City Inclusion. Okay. Okay. I encourage everyone to please go look. <laughs> uh, call us, stop by. <laughs> we, but yes, uh, we and then we, we have residential group homes where okay. we support people who live 24 hours a day in the homes that we either own or operate. Right. And so that requires 24 hour a day support. Right. right, okay. So if anybody's looking for work, they should go to rivercityinclusion.ca. Correct. Okay. Please and, and you thank have, you. And you have almost 30 jobs posted ballpark. Okay, so the next thing was employment for your clients. So do you have any clients currently looking for employment um, out in the community? We're actually just um, doing an intake with some new people. So okay. they're, they're the younger people coming from high school. Yep. So we'll be starting doing active job searches. Okay. Um, as great as it is when an employer calls me and says, I have this job. What we, what we really try to do is match the job to the person, exactly. not the person to the job. Yeah. So we look at what their hopes, gifts, and talents are, yeah. and then we develop from there. Okay. So gotcha. it's wonderful and is great. Nine times out of ten, we can find someone who wants to do that particular job. Okay. Um, Cal Tire is a good example. Okay. Um, Cal Tire came to me and said, you know, in Duncan, we do this and this. Have you ever thought of it? And within... I'd say within six hours, two people were hired. Wow. So, um, awesome. so it does work that way as well. Okay. But we tend to take the individual, help them identify what they're interested in, and then we explore from there. Okay. That's amazing. I, I'm, I'm just, I, I did not realize that River City Inclusion was so large. Yeah. A lot of people I, don't. <laughs> yeah. So I, that, that was, that was surprising to me. Yeah. Um, I knew about the social enterprise. Yeah. I'm glad you had a chance to speak about that again. Now, um, we're into the last third of this interview. So I want to s give you an opportunity to, if you had two priorities that you wanted to share with the general community that's going to see this video, what do you want to share with them? We'll start with you and then Maureen. Mm. Well, I think it, it, it's an extrapolation of what we've just been talking yeah. about. I, we're a wonderful uh, community-based, nonprofit, charitable organization that supports members to not just be in community, but to be a part of community. I think that's what's so important about community inclusion. It's not just to be in the community, it's to actually be a part of our community. And we have a growing number of clients as Campbell River's population grows, so our, our, is our client base, and we do have an enormous number of vacant openings relative to the size of our organization. And I really want to encourage people to look at us be, because there are many, many job opportunities right now. I mean, I think everyone recognizes there's a bit of a staffing crisis going on, and it is everywhere. It is. But if you're looking for something really, truly fulfilling, and, and I can say this from personal experience, my background was not in the social services sector. It was in, a, in the for-profit world, and I had a, a wonderful career, and I, I loved my job. This is an entirely different experience. It is so fulfilling. I, it's, uh, I find myself often quite teary, which is really an unusual place to be. But I, I deeply love what I do. And it, it's quite frankly surprising how much I really love what I do. And, and that uh, makes it worth those 16 and 17 hour days that I find myself pulling occasionally. But I, I, so I, I really would encourage people, you know, community living, when I was approached, about the position and I received a phone call saying, you know, I'm from Campbell River and District Association for Community Living and I said, oh, is that an apartment building? <laughs> like it, it doesn't describe what we are. Right. We are so much greater than our name, even River City yeah. Inclusion, which I think is a, is a more descriptive name. Yeah. What we do and the opportunities we can offer people and, and the opportunity, you know, a good wage and excellent benefits, 
that's wonderful and it's important and people deserve to, to have those things to live a balanced life. But also the rewards that you get out of the work that you do, I think is really tremendous. And so I'd really want people to explore what it means to come and work at an organization like ours. And right. you're rooted with the client and you're also rooted in the community. Right. So okay. that would be my first. Okay. Is, is, do I get number two also, or is that Maureen? <laughs> so you, you, can have, you can have the second one, then we're gonna give Maureen two. So I would really encourage, um, as Campbell River continues to grow, that employers take a good look at the clients that we support, and take the opportunity to speak with employers who currently do employ our clients. I think you would hear them say, in fact, I know you would hear them say what I just said, which is the rewards yeah. are tremendous. And a lot has been learned through COVID, good and bad. And what we have found from employers who have hired our folks is that our clients have been invaluable. Many of our clients showed up to work every single day and, di and, and didn't take any time off when, when others did and were really I, uh, critical to maintaining infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And I think the relationships that are made in the workplace, when you have a diverse and inclusive workplace, is again very telling of your community. Yeah. And, I, and, and it enhances your community in ways that you can't imagine. So I would really encourage employers to, to reach out to us, reach out to Maureen, reach out to Skyline Productions, mm -hmm. and okay. take a really good look at the benefits um, it's so easy to be scared of what you don't know, but we have all the supports in place uh, to provide a really successful experience for both the client and the employer, and I think okay. there's a lot to offer. Awesome. Maureen? Oh, Rachel covered most of it. Okay. Um, We're down to two minutes. Okay. Again, I'd <laughs> no like pressure. to... No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> um, I'd like to reach out to the community to encourage people to step outside the box and offer employment. To, um, we have an amazing team of job developers that work together and when you get to share, I often say I get to ride on the, the coattails of the people I support success. So that's what my job is all about, it's the successes, it's, it's, the, right. it's the things that I get to share in their accomplishments or an employer hires someone and says, geez Maureen and we should have done this 10 years ago. And I just smile and said, but we're doing it now, <laughs> right? Um, the Real Canadian Superstore, I have to comment, have recently employed in the last six months, I think they're on the fifth person, because nice. they've got a niche, they know what people can do, yep. they know what they need done, and they're willing to carve out the job based yeah. on the person's gifts and talents. So, so they get what they need done, and the yep. individual is working, is very successful and feeling good. Awesome. Um, I'd also like to compliment Camel River on their support of River City Inclusion. Okay. We're, we are built by the community. Mm -hmm. We were, the actual brick and mortar came from the community. And the brick and mortar extends itself to what we are now. So the fact that Camel River is so, so supportive, and, and we have several projects coming up that, that there is no government funding for. Right. We don't have the resources for but the community continues to support and donate to us to help us encourage and enhance individual lives. Okay. That's probably the biggest thing is, is, um, is the support we get from our community. Awesome. Well, Maureen and Rachel, thank you so much for spending time with us today on Explore and explaining all about River City Inclusion and how big it actually is <laughs> and all the different things you have to offer. And for anybody looking for employment, make sure you go to rivercityinclusion.ca. If you're looking for employment, that's where you'll find it. If you need employees, you'll also find them there and you'll reach out to Maureen. Thank you again, ladies, for coming today. You've been watching Explore. Please join us again.